Hey guys, Jim here. Welcome back once again. We're going to be taking a look today at a new knife from Richard Wu at Reich Knife called the Thor 2. Now, if you go back just a couple of months in my channel, maybe six months, um, you'll see a large video I did with six different models of Reich Knives. And I was immediately impressed with the overall build quality of the knives, again, considering the fact that they're coming from China. And, you know, China has that awful stigma attached that, you know, it's going to be shit steel, it's going to be very hurriedly manufactured and low quality, or at least a, a terrible uh, inconsistency from product to product. And we've noticed lately in the past two years or so, uh, because of Reati knives, because of Wee knives, and because of Reich knives, we're seeing a great degree of precision, uh, really great designs, designs that are not stolen from other people, which is another stigma attached to Chinese-made knives. Their original designs, very, very well thought out. Um, and I do think that Richards stands out as being some of the, uh, the coolest and the most aggressive. And he's experimenting with a lot of different materials. Now, when you get to the standard versions of the Thor 2, uh, they will not be laser engraved like this, but they will have the same steel, which is CTS 204P, which I have discussed in several videos in the past, so very, very quickly. The benefit to that is it's uh, not too terribly hard to sharpen. It holds a very, very fine edge. It retains that edge for a long time. It's got a high degree of corrosion resistance. And that particular steel will take a lot of different finishes, even full mirror polishing. So it gives the knife maker a lot of really great choices as to how they're going to finish their blade. They know that they're going to have a blade that's going to have great edge retention. So the customer is going to be happy with it. But unfortunately, you know, it's, not, uh, it's not tremendously <laughs> inexpensive. It is a, a fairly expensive steel. But uh, again, very, very high quality. It's worth spending the extra money. Now, the first thing I want to point out before we get too far into this is the fact that you are looking at a titanium integral frame. So this is not a standard flipper uh, that would have its presentation side, its lock side, and either standoffs or a backspacer. This is milled from a solid chunk of 6AL4V titanium. And because of that, it gives the knife maker more troubles. It gives them less access to the insides of the knife when they're assembling it, making any adjustments to the blade fitment and to the action and everything else. So they've really got to have a great degree of precision, and that's why a lot of people have never made an integral. It's not easy to do. And that's also why when you're buying into a custom-made knife, an integral is usually going to start around $1,300, bucks. With this, the base model is four to $500, and they do a lot of uh, varying different types of anodizing and finishes. And then the engraved versions I've seen between $600 and $700. This is pretty much the premium in Richard's Thor 2. Let's go over this very, very quickly uh, as far as the specifications go. Your blade is a 3.8 inch compound ground, machine ground blade uh, with a hand finished edge. All done in a really, really well done matte bead blasted finish. This is obviously done with ceramic media because it's very, very smooth and almost has that vapor finish to it. Now you'll notice it has a little bit of shine to it as well. So you see some reflectivity there. It is a beautifully done finish. The overall length on this bad boy is eight and three quarter inches, so it's not a tiny knife by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, but that size also does include this glass breaker right here on the end. Let's see if we can get it to focus. And there we have it. Nicely done there. Uh, it's titanium frame lock, as I mentioned before, full integral. It weighs about six ounces, just a touch over six ounces. So it's not a lightweight knife, but it's also not a big, heavy uh, lug wrench in your pocket either. It's, you know, kind of in between the two. 
you have a titanium deep carry pocket clip goes all the way up to here leaving about an eighth of an inch exposed out of the pocket so it's deep enough to make the deep carry guys mostly happy and for people like me that hate deep carry pocket clips I've still got a little bit of meat on the knife that I can grab onto to extract it from the pocket so it's it's a nice compromise of the two you've also got a lanyard opening back here so you can pop your lanyard and bead on there and make it even easier to extract the only let's see make sure I'm not misspeaking here yes the only branding on the entire knife is done across the uh, spine of the frame then you have the uh, the speed holes if you want to call them that a little bit of jimping on the back side of the frame he has made the flipper tab nice and smooth no sharp edges so uh, when you're sitting there playing with it over and over and over again uh, there are no sharp edges for you to be raking uh, across your finger as far as the lockup goes you are getting a steel on steel lockup because you have the steel lock bar insert which you can see is all the way up and around here you also have the over travel uh, preventer as well for the titanium lock bar nice solid but early lockup and here is your custom hardware there again that shows your over travel prevention there custom made pivot here see if we can turn it around so you can see it better there we go and that was custom anodized green there's a lot of colors going on on this one uh, and that may not be everybody's cup of tea especially with that lavender or very very light blue that we're seeing there uh, but there are several iterations available you just pick out your favorite colors uh, this is very much a rich gold that goes almost into a rose gold very interesting the way the colors pop on this one of the things that I love about Richard's designs is he does a lot of angular designs and you'll notice this is a triplane design so you have your flat plane here flat plane here and flat plane here but he is also adding some more architecture all the way around so there's more bevels being cut onto this frame than many companies blades flipping around to the other side you see the same thing overall it's a nice tidy package as a very futuristic look uh, if you don't look just at the engraving look at the non engraved models and you look at this knife open or close it has a very uh, futuristic almost uh, sci-fi kind of look to it it's got a very useful set of thumb studs here number one they are the blade stops as you see there but the way that they've been shaped and again this goes back to Richard's design very well thought out it's not just simply scalloped but it's scalloped at the right angle because on this particular blade with that particular placement in relation to the pivot you are pushing more upward than outward so it does give you that um, leverage there in the way that it's shaped you've got nice effective jimping on the spine of the blade uh, it's not sharp by any means but when you dig your thumb into it it does grab nicely done and uh, let's see here we've got nice swedge cut into the top of the blade and there you can see how this was ground you know you want to call this a compound grind because it is one grind here and one grind here um, but they're complementary grinds meaning it's the same grind it's just broken up uh, in, into two different sections so I don't know if you really want to call that a traditional compound grind where maybe you would have a large hollow grind here then a flat grind intersecting into it so uh, compound grind because it is ground in two different sections however the way that it's been done they're basically the same grind just set next to each other yeah by the way don't stick your fucking thumb in the tip it's pretty sharp overall uh, the action being done on ceramic bearings is fantastic I've never had any complaints about the action on Richard's knives the only suggestion I made on the originals was that his detent was way too hard and because of the shape of the knives that I had at the time there was almost no way to hold the knife without applying even more pressure on the lock bar making the detent even stronger with this one I could put my fingers on the lock bar and it's still fantastic it's easy to deploy if you did that on the old ones you literally couldn't open it I would hand it to people and they would give up after hurting their fingers 
and also you can take pressure off the lock bar because you have enough frame here to grab onto that it doesn't make it difficult. Now we get to the engraving portion here and you see that it is uh, laser engraved and he's taken the opportunity and I don't know if it's going to play the same way on camera as it does in person but if you look at it in uh, at one angle in the light you'll see the blue then you see this gold coming through in the engraving however when you put the right amount of light on it that gold turns into more of a rose gold it really is a uh, very unique actually a unique optical illusion pretty damn slick uh, me myself I'm not because it because that rose gold kinda goes into a pink color I'm not a huge fan of pink against light blue that's just a personal thing um, if this were a darker blue or if it were black or any number of other colors uh, I think I would appreciate the color spectrum just a little bit more but again everybody's different but as far as being a viable EDC, I think this can be. It's a touch heavy for EDC, and it is a bit large for EDC, but it's conveniently made, uh, meaning you can access all of the controls. Your thumb stud is very accessible here um, from this huge swedge that's been taken out. Your flipper tab is not obtrusive, but yet very, very easy to get to. The action is fantastic. The clip makes it a viable option for EDC. So for those of you that EDC a slightly larger or heavier knife, you're absolutely going to love this. It's got a narrow profile, so it is going to sit in the pocket and take up very little room. Now, I'm the kind of guy, uh, my knife pocket is exactly what I said. It, it is a dedicated knife pocket. Nothing else goes into it because I carry mostly very expensive knives and I don't need to prematurely wear them by keys and coins and shit banging all over them. However, if you're the kind that carries your knife in your pocket and carries other stuff in there, this is taking up a very small amount of room in that width so you could still reach your hand in your pocket easily and uh, not feel too overly cramped. It's a nicely sculpted clip with good retention, not overly strong, but good retention. The bits of custom hardware, like the pivot, really do set this uh, off as being something uh, a little more custom than you would typically get in a production knife. And that is what these are. They are production knives that are then customized. They'll make small series of different colors, different finishes, different engraving options. He's experimenting now with Damascus and Timascus and all kinds of really cool shit. So when you look at their authorized dealers like Blade HQ or GP Knives or Going Gear, you'll see a multitude of flavors for every model. So if you miss out on one shipment, don't cry too much because the next shipment, they might get even wilder, crazier, cooler stuff. Uh, you can see a lot of the work that Richard is doing on his Instagram page, which is Rike Knife, R-I-K-E. Very simple and very easy to follow. And uh, I'm actually working on a project with Richard right now. Um, we're in the, the genesis uh, of, the, uh, of the process at this point, so it may or may not pan out. But uh, expect to see something very cool. Not a knife. That's the only hint I'm going to give you. I can't shed any more light on the subject. Uh, but it's going to be very, very cool. And something I think a lot of people are going to enjoy. Something that um, I've designed from scratch that uh, I'm hoping he's going to be able to manufacture and do so at a price that... It can be somewhat affordable. And that really is where Richard is exploding in this industry. Right now, uh, China is exploding with high quality manufacturing. We're seeing a great degree of consistency and a great degree of quality as they're certainly stepping up their game with their quality of materials. Richard is certainly among them. And so far, um, you know, I, I got my first ones from V Knives uh, on Instagram. And I've talked to a lot of people that, that, that have these knives, and so far nobody has been disappointed. Now, the prices are going up a tiny little bit. Uh, if you go back a year ago, his knives were, you know, $250, 350 You know, now we're looking at about a $400 knife. This one uh, is about 600 and one dealer had this particular version for 700 So, yes, the prices are climbing up. I'm going to tell you perfectly honestly, I don't know that I would spend $700 on the knife sitting here in front of me. 
Does that mean it's not the right quality? No, I'm not saying that at all. It is quality enough, especially given the fact that it's a more expensive manufacturing process to do an integral. You can't discount that fact. However, when you hit 700 bucks, now you're in the realm of the highest end or some of the highest end mid techs, and you're in the realm of some folding custom knives. Again, not an integral, but that may not factor in for you when you're looking at what you're spending. 700 bucks is fucking steep. I'm not going to lie. So what I generally go to an American custom knife maker and buy a custom knife for 700 if given the opportunity, yes, I would. However, you know, you're going to wait several months to several years. Uh, who knows what's going to happen in that period of time, if you're going to change your mind uh, or whatever scandal may pop up. A lot of shit's been going on lately in the industry. Just, just crazy, crazy stuff. So maybe it's going to be more of an impulse purchase for you. You know that you can buy this right now, no delay. It gets shipped out to you in a day or two. And you've got your knife. So that may factor into it for you. But when you just look at it, you know, apples to apples, $700 production knife, $700 custom, most people are going to choose the custom. Now, when you're buying this for $400, there really is no such thing as a quality custom folding knife for $400. You're barely able to get one in the $500 range. So at $400, bucks, you know what, maybe you don't need the fancy schmancy engraving. You just want the really cool anodizing that Richard is doing, and he is knocking it out of the park with crazy anno jobs. You know what, at 400 bucks, you got a fucking solid knife with great steel, good quality materials, great fit and finish. I mean, really, really great fit and finish, and a superb action on ceramic bearings. There really are very few knives these days in that $400 price range that will give you all of that. So that's the way I would tell you to go. Um, at $400, bucks, it's, it's certainly a no-brainer. At six to $700, you've got to really be in love with the knife to make that kind of investment. And only you can make that choice. So for me, I think this is great in the engraved version. Um, he's got versions with inlays like uh, Timascus and Damascus and things like that. Those are certainly worth it because you're getting a very, very expensive material. Um, the next one I'm hoping to get from him actually has a very, very expensive mosaic patchwork Damascus blade. And I, it's about the only way that I can describe it to you. If you're curious about what that is, go to his page on Instagram. You will see it. It's a uh, niter blued. You can't miss it. It's on a gold frame. Looks fucking fantastic. And then I think you'll get what I mean. When you get into that level, yeah, six, seven, eight hundred bucks, no problem. Because then you get a custom knife with a mosaic Damascus niter blue blade and to have fancy inlays and things like that. Their prices are no longer six, seven hundred bucks. They're climbing up thirteen, fourteen, fifteen hundred. You do it in an integral, and you're starting at thirteen, fourteen hundred dollars. So you really do have to compare them side by side, material for material, and workmanship for workmanship. So when you do that, Reich still comes out as being one of the best values that you can get your hands on. And listen, if they were crap, I'd tell you they were crap. If they were crap, you wouldn't see them at Blade HQ and GP Knives. They have a very good reputation for, for carrying, you know, very good, high quality knives. So I think, honestly, that speaks volumes. But only you're going to know when you get it in your hand and you try it for yourself. So if you've got a Reich knife or when you get your first Reich knife, come back here, get into the comments section and let people know what you think, good or bad. We want to hear it both ways. Right now, I'm going to zip on out of here and try to get to another video. I'll see you guys then.